hey what's up so i'll show you now an absolute minimum introduction to web sockets in an express jazz and another library called socket io i will just create a web socket server that keeps sending data to all the connected clients one of the things that we can build in such functionality or, or in such example is a real-time dashboard or public dashboard so anyone opens our uh, website will see this dashboard updates in real time whenever our database updates it will tell WebSockets hey I have an update so the WebSocket will send this update to all the clients or the connected clients and uh, the client is free to do whatever uh, it wants with the data maybe re-render the whole page notify, notify the user whatever it wants so I will just do this thing and at the end whenever in the next videos when we start talk about RxDB whenever anything changes in our database I will emit it to all the connected users and that's the end goal to do such applications that I described describe. but if you want me to add authentication to the JSON of tokens or to add like uh, authorization so uh, a user X can't subscribe to events coming to user A stuff like that uh, I can show it to you but just just uh, put a comment in the videos and I will be happy to do it if you want because at the end everyone is uh, will have this question how I can make my web sockets secure how I can secure them how I can add authorization so you can't subscribe to events that you should not subscribe to and if you want to google about it it's this kind of things authentication is can be done uh, via JWTs, JSON of tokens, and authorization can be done by splitting your WebSocket server into multiple channels. It's, it's, it's very easy, it sounds complicated, but it's very easy. You will just uh, split the, your channel, your uh, WebSocket connection to multiple channels. Each user will have its own, uh, his own or her own uh, channel, and they will listen to that uh, coming from the server from that channel. So ju that's just be just talking. Let's just write some code to broadcast all events happening in the server to all the clients. And let's just show you uh, how we can connect to it. So first thing, I will create, I will go to my desktop, go whatever you want. And you can use this command in, Win in Linux system systems. So mkmake directory dir. Okay, and name it, uh, I will name it rxdb. WebSocket Express, I already did that. Then when you, when you go there, just type npm in net, then y, dash y. This will create an empty package.json for you. Uh, and package.json allows you to have or install packages and it will store the version for that package. So you will know what version you, you used in this application. So it won't break if there is an update. And when you install these packages they will be installed in node modules and by the way if you don't know these should not be touched I mean it's, it's just there don't touch it so I already did that and then now npm install you can type just i for that you will install a couple of packages for now it's only just two uh, socket.io and express I already did that as well Socket.io is an as is an package that simplifies dealing with loop sockets in JavaScript for the clients and for the server. So you will use the same package in both places. Okay, this is something um, I think a lot of people get confused by where I should put my loop socket code in both in the client and the, and on the server. Yeah, so let's just get a file called server.js. This would be the most simple express server you have ever seen. So const app would be equal to require. Oops. Just require express. This returns a function. This requiring this module returns a function. So invoke it. Now const. This is our HTTP server. This is actually from Node itself. This package I'm about to include. This is called HTTP. Now create server. Pass to it our app, our express app. Now const io, which is the socket io server, would be equal to require socket io, and this also returns a function. 
passed to it our server. Now, our HTTP server should be listening. So listen, or this should be called start, but whatever. So 3000 and a callback function on starting this app should be console log started on local host port 3000. So this is our HTTP server, and since we passed it to our socket IO server, we can actually listen to some events that will happen on this socket IO instance. So on connection, so there is an event called connection. Whenever a client subscribes or connects with this socket IO server, this event will be triggered from the client will be sent to the server automatically and we can actually execute a callback function here so I will log that we have a user uh, connected now I will use a function called set interval which accepts two parameters the first one is a function the second one is interval so every five seconds and this takes it in milliseconds so every 5000 milliseconds which is five seconds call this function I pass to you what I will do in this function I will use the, the socket IO instance which is representing the WebSocket server and I will emit data by an event called message and this data will be something like this just an array and this is actually called broadcasting it's called broadcasting because I'm sending to this data to everyone subscribing uh, to this WebSocket server. So no authentication, no authorization, no custom channels. For example, if you came from Laravel, you will see some people what will do is to make these channels dynamic, they would put the user, user maybe, and then the ID. So each, each, each user will have a custom uh, channel name or event names, right? So something like this. This is the first user. This is the second user, third user. And of course, this is alongside with JWT will be more valid. And you need to check if the ID from the JWT is the same one for the channel and you need to do this kind of um, stuff. So let's just stick with broadcasting this um, generic event to everyone subscribing to us. So let's just run the server and it will be completely fine. Nothing changed. Completely fine. So to test our uh, code running on our local host you, you we usually use postman this is a tool to test restful apis but this tool does this tool does not test web sockets i hope they do that but there's another tool that do that it's called uh, hops scotch i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but it used to be called postwoman uh, that's the old name there is actually an article online why they changed it but yeah this is the new name we can actually test web sockets here but let's try to go so our actually if you go to localhost port 3000 we will get this response from our application that it cannot uh, cannot get this request I mean we are not registering any routes it's not about express this tutorial but uh, this means it's still it's at least working that retains an error so let's try to go to and connect with with this server that hosts this web socket let's remove, let's remove this now go to real time the stop go to socket io and put this url here and that theoretically should work and looks like it works yeah so I think I enabled, I, I opened this one time. Let me just show you one thing. I think they have a, a proxy server that makes these kind of things uh, normal. So if, if you think about it, when I put here localhost 3000, how should this application know which localhost I'm talking about? Because every host, every server has its own localhost, right? If you think about it. So I think maybe they have a way to know that or, or yeah, I mean it makes sense that I mean my machine in this in this context. But what I'm 
what I want to show you if you go to settings I actually enabled this I, I this is the third time I'm recording this video and in one of them I got, went to settings and enabled proxy and this I, sh I think this will send the request here and they can maybe they can forward it to our uh, local host but yeah, it's it's uh, it's working. It's really interesting because I was going to show you another tool called uh, Anigrok, which uh, expose your local host and make it make it public. So I think um, I will just show it to you. It's really interesting that you read about this tool. I will put a link in the description. But I think it's really interesting that this tool can connect with your local host without any. I mean, we don't even install any kind of software. I mean, this is huge uh, in my opinion. And you can, as you can see, you can actually install it, installed it as an application. This is a progressive web application, but uh, having a powerful tool like this on your uh, web browser is very awesome. So let's just return to my point. Uh, since you can put just the link for your server and connect to it with with Socket IO client, so this Socket IO package will be installed on your server and run with your express server on top of your express server and on your front on your front end you will subscribe to the URL for that WebSocket server and as you can see since we are broadcasting this event to all the clients this client is receiving this message containing this data from here let's go and let's just go and show you how this is really cool. I mean, we are literally broadcasting to everyone so that is subscriber. So let's go and subscribe from another tab, which you can think about it. Another user, they will both see the same kind of stuff. Oops, oops, my bad. Wrong URL where this comes from uh, connected now they both should see the same thing every five seconds uh, as you can see still works so this is the end goal I'll just keep uh, sending the database state the database data to all the connected clients maybe you can extend this to create real-time dashboards re-render the whole page when uh, everything with when, when anything changes I mean there is a lot of features you can implement with this uh, and the idea that uh, save the front end is just listening and rendering stuff is really awesome. No HTTP request, no handling, uh, no using these all of these complex uh, reducers. Uh, no, not reducers, sorry. Uh, what they are called in React? Hooks. And dealing with rendering the the DOM and this all these performance issues with HTTP requests. So just yeah, just listen to events and display whatever you want. But just another thing, if this does not work with you enabling the proxy for some reason, maybe try to close everything and then reopen uh, the app or just use this Anagrok. I highly recommend it. It's extremely easy to use as well. It's, it, it just works. I like these kind of tools. So go to downloads choose your operating system it will be chosen by default so I'm having Ubuntu Linux so download it with this button it will have a zip file unzip it then it will give you just a file uh, an executable called Anigrok you don't need actually to authenticate but you can just immediately start using it so put Anigrok then HTTP pass to it HTTP then the port and that and this will give you a uh, actually an, um, a, a URL that you can send it to anyone and they can access your uh, server running on your machine. I will just show you really quick. So I have it here. So I grok like this. So I grok now HTTP and I am running th port 3000, right? So it should be before you run in grok, this server should be running and now put 3000. As you can see, it will give you two links. One is not secure. One is secure. You can use them whatever you like, whatever you want to do with them. Use it uh, as you want. And another thing I did not show you: we are logging whenever a user connect to our server, right? To our WebSocket server, we have two, right? So here you go. 
let's, let's now just connect with another one so now we have three and let's just get that link oh, choose WebSocket, now go to connect we should see yeah, another user connected so if you think about it, we can actually put here io.emit new user we can listen to this on the front end we can notify other users that hey there is another user um, op opened the same page like you I mean this is a lot of websites do like these old chat websites I'm not sure if they do it in the same way but this is how you can do it uh, so this is like the most minimum introduction to web circuits at the end I will just import the RxDB stuff here and I will emit the changes happen and happened there to all the clients. I will broadcast it to everyone. I hope this was useful and thank you. And remember, if you want me to create some uh, tutorials about authentication and authorization web circuits and express, I will be happy to. Thank you.